Bruciani, and today I'd like to take a look at a device called a tangent galvanometer. This piece was first described in the 1800s as a way of detecting and measuring electrical currents. It's a simple model and it can be made using a magnetic compass, a few turns of wire, and a battery. In fact, this is a piece that I might have my students try for themselves. So first thing is we want to take a look and see how this is built. So here is our first model of the tangent galvanometer. We have a compass, we have the wire wrapped around it, and I've positioned the needle so that it's directly underneath those wires. Now when I hook up a battery to it, we see that the needle moves directly perpendicular to that coil of wires. And if I were to turn the battery around, Once again, we see the needle move, but in this case, the, it has swung 180 degrees so that we now have the needle facing in the opposite direction. But the point is, it is actually perpendicular to that coil of wire. Now, here's my example of a larger demonstrator model for the tangent galvanometer. This is one that I would use to show to my students. Uh, it starts out with two batteries here and a battery holder. The battery holder has wires coming out of it, and just to make it easier to connect, I've attached alligator clips to the ends of each wire. The coil is actually wrapped around a clear plastic cylinder that was cut out of a three liter soda bottle. We take a look at it from the side, we can see the, the piece that I cut out is about maybe three inches wide. There's about 15 turns of wire around the outside of that and the wire then comes out at the bottom and then goes over to a bolt that's been added to the base, the wooden base here. And as you can see, the wire comes out on this side and there's also a second wire coming out on this side. And the alligator clips would attach to those bolts when I want to energize that coil. Now, inside then, whenever it's connected, we would get a magnetic field. So to show that, we can take a compass and if we look very closely, uh, I'm lining the the, I'm turning it slightly so that the compass needle is directly parallel with the coil of wire. And if we watch very closely, if I energize the coil, once again we see it move perpendicular to that coil which is showing the magnetic field direction. If I switch these around, and we touch it again, we see the compass move in the opposite direction. Here's my display model one more time. In this case, I've hung a bar magnet down from the top of the coil. It is parallel to the coil itself, and once again, if I energize this coil, we should see a movement, in this case of the bar magnet, it lines itself once again to the magnetic field which is perpendicular to the coil itself. Uh, if I release it, it returns back to the center. If I were to switch my polarity around, switch my wires around here, we will see it reverse itself uh, once again, it is perpendicular to the magnetic or to the coil of wire and it's lining itself up to the magnetic field. And we can play around with it a little bit. Just tap it slightly and get it to swing back and forth. Uh, this was actually the precursor to an electric motor. Uh, it shows the relationship between magnetism and the flow of electricity. So anyway, this is my example of a tangent galvanometer, and in a later issue I will show you how this idea is used in a battery tester.